recording. It is recording now. So, uh, so let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Eric. Uh, my name is Claudia. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., from the studios in Fairfax City. Uh, we are very humble and grateful that Eric Bisser accepted our invitation to the show. Eric, welcome to the show, man. Hi, Claudio. How are you? Doing today? very well. Tell me, so with, with the craziness that is going in the world with the virus and people not being able to tour and vaccine, how is this affecting your your life, your family, your creativity, and all the more. Yeah, world. well, it is not, doesn't make too much difference because I'm I'm sitting at home most of the time working away. Yeah. And uh, my wife is a teacher and she's actually, she has gone back to school for the first time this week. Yeah. You know, she was home for weeks and weeks, but she's gone to school again here because uh, it's a, it's a little bit getting a little bit less serious now, eh? And everybody's getting the vaccine nowadays. It's available in, in Holland. No, it's not available yet. I haven't I haven't had it yet. Yeah. I think I'm not old enough. <laughs> I put mine yesterday. <laughs> you, did, you got it yesterday? Yeah. So still the arm hurts a little bit. Okay. It's only one. They I did. They, they are like three or four companies, but they're not. And um, Pfizer, another one. I did the other one, which is only one shot. Okay. And uh, you feel this the first day because it's very strong. But I'm okay. Yeah. You know, I need yeah, to. Uh, you don't get sick now? No, 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 I'm fine. No. You know, I, I need to work a little bit today, help at home, my wife too. So, no, um, no, no. No, I'm just waiting for it now. Uh, I should receive a letter from the. For the government the administration, yeah, yeah. So, where, where are you, Eric? Were you born like in a music in a musical family, or when did you begin playing uh, the guitar? In your case, jeez, uh, I was. Uh, I think I think I was nine when I picked it up first. Yeah, and my father was a guitar player, not professionally, but he did play a lot, you know. And my mother was a singer. And I'm the oldest of the family. I have a brother uh, who's called Hans, and he is he played played with us too for a long time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you could say it was, it was uh, a musical surroundings anyway in the family, you know. And you always prefer the guitar than, let's say, the piano, or you you were. No, I yeah, <laughs> that's a difficult one. <laughs> I, Later on, I, I prefer the piano because it's yeah. it's easier, you know, to to compose. It's easier on a piano. You don't have to. A guitar has impossibilities, and piano yeah. no, it doesn't have. It's easier, you say, it's easier to compose in the piano, a little basic, and then do arrangement with guitar and other instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so you begin. You began playing music professional for since you were I don't know eighteen or you know twenty years old, right? So yeah, since I, I was I I I was a hippie, you know. So <laughs> when I had to choose which direction I would go for study, yeah. I chose architecture because I did not I didn't want to go to the conservatory because it was just classical music there that you could study in Holland. That has changed now. It's not like that anymore. But, but in my days, uh, it was just classical music that you could study. I didn't want to do that because I'd been studying classical music for years and years already. Yeah. So I wanted to do something else. I mean, I was just stupid, really, because I should have studied music, but I didn't. <laughs> but I at, at the time when you went to architecture school, you, you. You were not that interested in the kind of classical stuff. You you want to study more kind of Dutch music or acoustic that that stuff, well, right? That the yeah, program like would improvisation offer. and improvisation and uh, and jazz and yeah. folk music too. A a anything but classical music. <laughs> anything for classical music. Yeah. But that was that was that was just a, an idiosyncrasy. I call it from the youth. Yeah. You know because. I really like classical stuff now. Yeah, I, I heard you like Bach. 
a lot. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bach is the best. He's he's the man. Yeah. Yeah, he's the man. So grow, growing up at home, what kind of music were you listening to at the time? Le, Le Zeppelin, Genesis, Pink uh, Floyd, that kind of stuff. I listen to everything really, everything that that is good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not interested in so much in commercial music. Yeah. But but for the rest, if it's Zappa, if it's uh, English music, you know, a lot of English folk music, Irish folk music. Yeah. Jazz. And I'm of course a big admirer of Frank Zappa. Yeah, Frank Zappa. Yeah, everybody yeah. loves him. Yeah. And then, so your bro all the brother, you did have vinyls at home that yeah. you were listening to, or yeah, vinyl. Yeah, that's what I, I have. If you see in the back, yeah, I have a, a, a big music collection, and I have three different floors. So I have some oh, stuff yes. here, some stuff in the other room, and then on the floors, I have a big music collection. Is 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 that building in New York? Uh, they, no, no, no. I live in I live in Virginia, close to okay. Washington D.C. I didn't know, you know, where you were living. Yeah, I live like um, like like 15 minutes from from Washington D.C. Okay, in Virginia, and it's in a in a city called Fairfax. Very nice to raise family. Yeah, we we were in Washington once. Yeah, a long time and, ago. And uh, so uh, and then back in in why. You and, and, and Peter Wickers uh, decided to put the band together back in 78, right? Is that correct? Yeah, correct. What, now, we started... what, was the, what was the motivation? You, you met him at the conservatory at the time or? No, uh, Peter was. Yeah, Peter was at the conservatory. Yeah, but I was, I was still studying then architecture. Yeah. And, uh, but I also traveled to Ireland quite a lot. And in the, at the and in those days, Peter came over to Dublin, where I was staying for a while, and he wanted to start a band. You know, basically it was his initiative, the whole thing. Although I was involved with it immediately after that. Yeah. But uh, he came to me to Dublin, and I had played with him before on a. On an arch in an architecture kind of a band, you know, it was on the on the college college band, and uh, he said to me that he liked for some reason he he thought that I I and he would I were, were on the same line anyway musically, which is which was right, and he was doing the conservatory in the Hague, and. Uh, yeah, he and was very serious. He was very serious about it because he was a music student, and uh, yeah. he he basically left his school before he was nearly finished, but he left it then to do this flag thing. You know, he, he had a lot of uh, trust in it anyway, and we started working professionally then. And then you guys then go ahead and. And hire like three or other musicians to, to play with you guys, right? Yeah, yeah we, we hired some more people, but we hired a, a violin player. Yeah. And my brother was a bass player. And that's how we started with the four of us. Yeah. And then we, you know, which is funny, uh, Peter and I, we said to each other, well, we, we tried already a couple of bands, you know, but nothing had worked so far. And uh, and then we we said to each other, well, we're gonna try this for two years, and if it's not working in two years, we'll have to do something else. I mean, I'll have to start doing architecture or something, because uh, yeah, well, you have to do so. You have to make some money anyway, not much, but we had we had nothing then in those days, so we started working him and me on a in a little room in attic in Holland and uh, after two years exactly two years uh, the band became suddenly overnight very well known in Holland because of one television program that we did and uh, we started selling 
albums or LPs. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning. But it was funny that we had set the two years as the time to prepare and it exactly worked like that, you know? And you guys were rehearsing, were doing some gigs already before you released the first album? No, no. No, 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 we were not doing gigs. We were doing gigs uh, from this from the day when we had the, the the LP finished. Yeah, I got you. So you guys were working on that particular uh, LP, and it, it took two years to put together. Wow. Yeah, two years. Well, we we needed the time, of course, to write music. Yeah, that was the that was the main thing because we knew my brother was going to join us, and we knew the the violin player who was going to join us, but uh, we didn't have any music yet. And that was, of course, the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the rest is, so where, where you, so you guys, you know, got together for two, three years, began writing music, you released the first album, and then overnight, you, like you mentioned, you became a success. Yeah. Were you surprised it happened, or you knew that the, 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 the quality of the stuff, what kind of folky music was? It's going to be attracted to, to people. Yeah, both, I think. First of all, we we were surprised that it happened because uh, it always like like that. You, know, you can never be sure, you know. Yeah. But on the other hand, we knew if we would stay at it, we would finally be okay, I think. We felt that, you know. And it, it worked out well. And then you began touring in, in Holland and then going everywhere in Europe, right? And after that, yeah. you guys were, you know, were very busy to try to make, make, try to make money. Yeah, well, first of all, we were in Holland. And Holland is good for, there's a lot of people in Holland, you know, it's very thickly populated. Yeah. And uh, so you have a theater in every town. We have a circuit of two, 200 theaters, I think, in Holland. Wow. And... Uh, we can, uh, we could basically nearly play them all, you know. Yeah. But a uh, hundred good ones you have that we did. And we started off in, the, in those hundred theaters after the television program that we did. Every, every theater wanted us. And we started playing there. And then we had to hire uh, technicians, roadies, lighting guys, sound guys. That was all difficult too. Thank you. Yeah, to, uh, some coffee. Sweet, me too. Yeah. Black, you don't put milk on it? No. Uh, I think it's a shame to put milk in it. <laughs> what, what about Chilean wine? Like Chilean, Chilean wine. Chilean wine. That's the best in the world, man. Yeah, that's very nice. But, you know, it's a little problem that it has to travel so far from Chile to, to Europe. Yeah. I think they, uh, it's not, it's not env environmentally, it's not, not okay really to transport everything from there to, to here. Yeah. But I know the Pisco too. The, are you like this stuff? Pisco? Yeah. Especially the uh, Pisco Sour, you know? Pisco Sour, yeah. <laughs> when I go to, when I, when I, I never been in, I never been in, in your country, but when I go there, I will bring you some stuff. Yeah, that'd be nice. You know, there's a CD there. Uh, which is called uh, The Art of Drinking. It's one track on a CD. Oh, no, it's not among the 22 CDs. No, no, it's, no, it's not here because I listen to everything. Yeah. Do, you, do you have that one? The um, Life no, in Chile, no. the, double, the double CD. Alive. No, this, this is the one in vivo in Chile. That's the one you're referring to, right? Yes, that's the one I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. There's a track there called The Art of Drinking. And and that's all about uh, pisco sour. Oh yeah, they are drinking. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The art of, can you find it? Yeah, yeah. It's number uh, in the CD two. The song is number number twelve. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know about how it's Yeah. Number. What about we, you? How how when you guys were in Chile? You know, I interviewed Eduardo Gatti, who is the guy who grow los momentos. Okay. Yeah, you Gatti. Got yeah. yeah. He, I interviewed him. He's a very nice guy. I'm a, he in is, many yeah. ways, when, when I'm done with the interview, I will give him a call to thank him the video for him to watch it because he loves your music. So how how they came together that 
the people mentioned to to do that song and play the song? Because of course you didn't know that, right? Yeah, there was a there was a journalist there who said, "I have a good idea for your for your concert." Yeah, and I I, geez, I forget his name now. Uh, you must know him. He's a well-known music journalist. Ah, his name just escapes me without think okay. of it. And then you needed to learn the night before the song, or not? yeah, yeah, no, we yeah we had to we had to uh, decipher the music, of course. Yeah, but it's not a very complicated song in a way that it's difficult to do that. It, it was it wasn't difficult, but we did it in a, in one morning in the hotel room, and uh, immediately that night we played it for the first time. And it was very successful, you know. People went crazy. Oh, they're so good, the audience there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you started, I, I have seen the video on you too. You're doing another song. Yeah. I forgot, I forgot the name. And then you continue in the Los Momentos. And yeah. then the lady to your right. Yeah. Started. Right. You look at her like, okay, you, you. Begin playing Los Momentos when you were, you know, like 20 minutes. You look at her to your right, and then she began doing it. And people went crazy in the stand. Because... <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's beautiful. Man. Uh, yeah. I made me, made me cry because that's, that song is is so popular in Chile, you know? So yeah. a, a musician like of your caliber, you know, doing an interpretation of that stuff was beautiful, man. So yeah. let me... um. You at the time you were work, going uh, going on out to Ireland, right? And then you um, you arranged and produced the album "Tire and, and Emotional" with Mary Coughlin. Yeah, I didn't know who she was, and uh, so I looked her up yesterday in in a Spotify, and um, and you 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 contribute about six. It's very good music, man. Yeah, I did I did about six or seven albums with her. Yeah. But I recently stopped at work because I started to repeat myself, and uh, because I was I was producing for her, you know, I never really played with her. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, uh, it didn't work anymore. The cooperation, so we stopped. We were not fighting, but uh, we we both thought it would be better. For a while, anyway, to do to stop no. that work. That the first album, the first album, the, the tire and, and emotional, it became yeah. a success in Ireland, right? Yeah. 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 It's a good album, huh? It's a very good album. Listen to that. She, yeah. uh, she has had a, a very difficult life, so it was. Yeah, she's a drinker. Yeah. She had, uh, she had enormous problems. I remember we did a uh, in London. We did. A live recording for a live CD, and uh, there was this car outside, you know, a van with all the equipment yeah. for the recording equipment. And we put these lines and camera lines inside the building. Yeah. And uh, they said, uh, "Now you sit here, and you can keep an eye on on her dressing room," you know. Because we knew that if she was drinking, we couldn't do, we couldn't use the recording because it would be out of tune. Sure. She couldn't, she couldn't really do it when she drank. So I was sitting there watching her all the time <laughs> until I, I missed her. Suddenly, I, I don't know where she went. I, so I ran inside the building, and uh, there she was in the toilet, uh, uh, with the door still open. She was downing a, a bottle of vodka really a liter of vodka you know <laughs> and uh but she stopped it she's out of she's she's she doesn't drink anymore now and yeah. since since then she's gotten very good too yeah she released another album recently in the year 2020 uh recently i i like because i went to the website um it's very good stuff yeah. It reminds me a lot of the early work that you did. Not the first album, but the second album. It's very good stuff. I mean, obviously she had, she's very talented, but hope, you know, hopefully the drinking will go away because 
See, when, when you guys put together that album and became an overnight success, you, you saw like a, I don't know, like a hundred thousand copies right away in, in, in Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. yeah. And there's not so many people in Ireland, you know. <laughs> Compared there's to only Holland, four right? million or so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like, do you like Ireland at all? You used to go yeah, there? Yeah, well, I have an ex-wife in Ireland. Yeah. And my, my daughter is living in Dublin. Yeah. So I go there a lot still, you know. Yeah. Uh, tell me why you decided to put that, the, the box together. Well, 75% are your recordings, so you you have all the right to use it, but why why you decided to to put that box together? Well, it was handy to do because if we were we were selling after concerts. Yeah. And we had, we, you cannot tell, sell 20 CDs, you know, 20 different ones. I yeah. mean, it, that's too chaotic to do. Yeah, you have to keep track of every CD. So I thought at one stage, I'll ring EMI and Polygram, Polygram and see if I get permission to, uh, to put them together in the box, all 22. And they said to me, yeah, you can do that. But now they're not keeping track of, the, of it anymore. If I if I sell uh, the CDs or not or not, they, they don't they don't care so much anymore. But they used to eh? at yeah. the first at first. But now uh, we uh, we just sell them, you know. We, we we don't even talk about it anymore. Yeah, sure. And then. Uh... You got to a point where you decided, well, I don't want to tour anymore. I want to enjoy my life. Or when when was the last time you were involved with Flirk as a band? Because now the the band, of course, keep on using the name legally, I think. But yeah. you, when do you decide to? Well, I don't. I, I want to do something else now. Well, there's this guy Pablo. Yeah, Pablo. Yeah, I interviewed so, him. Yeah. Did you talk to him? Yeah, I talked to. Uh, I talked to. First of all, I talked to Pablo. And the lady uh, uh, that played the violin, which uh, Anuka, Anuki? Yeah, Anuk. Anuk, Anuk. Yeah. And then I interviewed, I think, Joris after that. Well, I'll tell you what we did. Uh, about three years ago, we stopped it. Eh? Because, yeah. I, I, I mean, we, re we really did, did enough touring, you know, and uh, we thought it was time for the younger people to to do it, to start doing this. So at the time, Pablo was working with us as a guitarist and a bass player. And he's yeah. very good. He's a very good player. And uh, I'd met him in uh, Mexico and uh, he's Mexican, eh? Yeah. And uh, I said to him, well, we will stop this thing. And are you interested in taking it over? You know, it wasn't like he started by himself. I asked him to. Yeah. And he said, uh, yeah, he was very interested to do it. And they just started doing this now. They've, I mean, Corona came in between, but they just started before the Corona started, you know. Mm. And then they had to stop. But they will go, they will go on and do, the, do their real work soon, I think. Yeah, uh, George told me that they will... They will get uh, rehearsing in March, and then they will go during the summer. I think they will do some tours. And... Yeah, well, nobody knows if it's what, 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 if it's working then, but we yeah. hope it will. Maybe maybe they will call you one night, and then you become a a guest in one of the shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you don't miss on life, no. No. Yeah. Yeah, you did of course, for I, so long, I, I like you know? that, but uh, I basically did this because I wanted to stop uh, playing live, you know. Yeah. So uh, I don't think I will play with him. But, uh, but you, you're you're still at home composing and doing arrangements and doing other stuff, right? You're not playing live, but you're doing music related stuff, right? Yeah. I'm also writing a book about a friend of mine who... It was an alcoholic. He killed himself drinking. Wow. And uh, he, he was a musician, a very good one. 
He was a songwriter, very intelligent guy, but uh, he killed himself and it took me a year to get over this or to come at ease with it, you know, and then I started started writing this book and it's very difficult to to do. I under, I, I discovered but it's just, because it's the first time I'm doing something like this. And uh, it's very time consuming. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a book about your friendship? It's a book about Fleur? It's about, or no, nothing? no, no. It's not about Fleur. It, it doesn't have anything to do with it because it's his career. His career, his yeah. His thing. He's called Herman Poedergoorje, which is a Dutch name. But uh, I'll be another year before it's finished, I think. And, and, you, and which language are you writing in English or in your, your, your language, mother, your mother tongue? No, I, I'll write it in Dutch. In Dutch, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, wanna, I wanted to bring your attention to uh, three songs. Yeah. If you can tell me a little bit. The Blacksmith. Okay. The Blacksmith, how they came together. Uh -huh, that's that's, that's a beautiful composition, man. I like uh, That's a good I, question. You know, the, I listened to SDs and I have other compilation and I went to Spotify when I put in the, this interview together and I listened to the song probably the long version, the short version, the one that you have live, the one that is Spotify live, mm -hmm. uh, like 20 times, man. It's a, it's a beautiful yeah. <laughs> At least 20 times. I'm very serious. I have a, a good, very good headphones, and I put my, my headphones, I listen to this. I never get tired of this. Stuff. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's an Irish, it's a melody that I came across in Ireland. Yeah. And I think it's English or Irish, I'm not sure whether it's, but it's tradition, it's traditional music. Yeah. And uh, we were working in England at the time. We were recording in uh, in a studio south of London, and I said to the producer, who was Mike Bett, do you know him? No, no. No, well, he's kind of a, an interesting guy, but I said to him, uh, listen, I want to do this song, I think we should put it on, and uh, let's get Mary Coughlin. Uh, but he wasn't so taken with that idea. And he said, uh, uh, we should take another singer, Maggie Riley. Did you hear of her? I know her name, yeah. I yeah. never, I have no idea. She to used to work for with Mike Oldfield. Mike Oldfield, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So she came to the studio and she sang it. And on the first recording, which comes from a CD, from a studio CD, it's her singing it. But uh, later on, we did it with uh, Mary Coughlin. I don't know why he wouldn't take, why he wouldn't go with Mary Coughlin. She has a rather low voice, yeah. Mary has. And uh, maybe he thought it was too low or something. Uh, you never know the reasons, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but, beautiful. Well, but what about the immigrant? That's a beautiful composition. Yeah, that is, that's nice yes, you mentioned that too, because that is a Jewish melody, basically. Yeah. That is not very recognizable anymore because it was heavily rearranged. But uh, we did that on uh, live in Amsterdam, I think. Um, I forget which which LPs we uh, which LPs carry which tracks, but. Yeah, the emigrant was, uh, you know, you hear the traveling of the Jews and the problems they had. Now we are in Holland, we are, <laughs> we are not completely in, in, uh, in on one line with the Jews, you know, because I, they're doing terrible things to the, uh, to the Palestinians too. It's not, it's not all uh, the fault of the Palestinians. It's not all the fault of the Jews. Everybody is making mistakes, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you can, you know, you hear the, the the atmosphere of the traveling Jews in that music. It's yeah. very good. It's a very good song. Yeah, I really like this song. And what oh, about it's the third one? Yeah. What about the, the variation of of a lady on a lady? 
Oh yeah. No, yeah. no. You you cannot you cannot Fleur cannot tour if they don't play those three songs because yeah. People <laughs> people expect that. Yeah. That, yeah. That was one of the early stuff, right? One of the early albums. That's right? the first yeah. one, really. Yeah. Variations on the Lady. That was uh, from the first LP. LP, yeah. And from that LP, it was the first song that we worked on. And uh, it, it it took a whole, took up a whole side of an LP. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's a long piece. It's a long piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. About 20 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it reflected somehow the the problem I talked about earlier on about classical music, you know. And uh, because the pieces especially the middle, which is a long violin solo. And it's very classically orientated. Eh? So, you know, you never, you never uh, choose what you write because it chooses you. Oh, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I, I, that's what happened here too. Yeah. Because no, I, didn't wanna, I didn't want to write a classical violin solo, but I did it anyway. I no. couldn't resist it. Yeah. No, no, that's a beautiful thing. And you have you you have composed. Uh, you've been involved with, with more than fifty albums, right? Overall. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. But you yeah. have to be careful not to do too much, because you start repeating yourself. You know. Yeah. I hope I. I think I hope I stopped in time. Yeah, the, the quality need to be there, right? Otherwise, what's the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but some musicians, they don't care. They make another, an album a year. Whether it's good or bad, they want to make money. You know, and they want to tour and make money. Yeah, well, I can see that point, but uh, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I've made enough money, you know, so uh, that's not the, that's not point. why we do it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need to enjoy, you need to be good quality. And you like also, Doing music for ballets as well, right? Ballet, yeah, the theater, yeah. Do you like doing that kind of stuff? Yes, it's because uh, my son, who's forty now, he's called Tom. Yeah, and he, he's a, a lighting engineer with uh, the Netherlands Dance Theater. Uh, it's a, a very big ballet company, and. Uh, and uh, he, he works with them, you know, a lot. And he, he sets up, and you, there you can see how important the lights are for these productions, because the sound is all on tapes and the dancers, it's really bodies and light, you know? It's beautiful. And, I, I, but that, that's not the reason why, uh, <laughs> what was the question? I forgot. No, we're talking about the 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 theater, your theater, and, and then ballet that you like to, you know. Yeah, yeah, we did we did a lot of uh, work for dancing yeah. in the past. That was nice. Any soundtracks at all? You have done any soundtrack or soundtracks? Yeah, for a movie or. Uh, yeah. I think we don't. I've done some movies, but yeah. I didn't do them with Flerik. I did them on my own. On your own, yeah. And uh, they're kind of uh, uh, animated movie movies. Yeah. Uh, they're drawn, you know, from uh, a Dutch guy. But they're all they're also twenty five years. It's also twenty five years ago. So it's yeah. a, the series. Uh, and then with the with the the, the new uh, composition that that you you're working on right now at home, do you plan on releasing that? You know, as as Eric B as yourself, you know, or no? That's for yourself. Maybe I don't know if 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 there are some people interested in it. Maybe I'll consider it. But for now, I, I, that's not my plan. I, I basically retire, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you you know, but the quality is quite sure the quality is still there, man. You're retired, but still you're you know 
playing the guitar, playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good wow. stuff, man. You're good, man. Eric. Yeah, thank you. You know, thank you're, you're, you're you're, your parents, your parents should be very proud of you, man. Yeah, they're not here okay. anymore. They're up there. Yeah, they're up there. But my dad yeah. too. But um, uh, my, my, I began listening to music when I was a, a baby. My dad had uh, a jazz and tango collection. Oh yeah. And then yeah, big big time in Chile. And then, uh, but my stuff was rock and roll. Led Zeppelin, Pink right. Floyd. Yeah, yeah, of course. Genesis. Of course. Yeah. That kind of stuff. But my dad liked jazz, so I began listening to music when I was a baby. You know what I never understood was yeah. how we became so well known in Chile. I think it has to do with the days of Pinochet, because yeah. we came in more or less immediately after he left. Eh? Yeah. But every time you went there, yeah. you were going for one night to the one show and you did you book another one and a third night and a fourth night. Yeah. That was good. You know, financially it was good because it's far away, you know. Yeah. And you know, a guy called Franco Cabello, he no. used to play with us in Chile. Really? He was uh, he he played some ponyas. Oh, okay, yeah. But he died. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Recently. Yeah. No. He was a young guy. But and in never, Mexico. I could, yeah, in Mexico. I could never find Pablo. out why. Yeah. What happened to him? Yeah. And Pablo was know. just Pablo was doing the translation, right? Because he didn't speak Spanish, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then in, in Mexico too, you you guys began very popular too, you know? Yeah, yeah. When was the, the first time you went there was to OA? 2008 or before that? Uh, what did you say? When was the again, first please. time you went to Chile? Was 2008 or it was before that? Okay. Mm. I have to look it up. <laughs> no, don't worry. Yeah. I have a book here. The, huh. Yeah, because the, the album, is, the you did the 208, 208 and then 214 also was the big, for, for the research that I didn't like. But, I think we were there already in 96 or something, or 98. Ah, oh, wow, to like 10 years before that, wow. Yeah. yeah. But you, you went to Chile and you went to Argentina and Brazil, right? All the other countries, right, or not? No, we were never in Brazil, I think. But uh, maybe we, if we get an invitation, we still go. Because we, we're sorry that we didn't go there. Brazil is beautiful, man. Yeah. Big country, man. Yeah. Different type of music, but it's very good. Yeah. You need and to I keep have... on composing, Eric, man. Yeah, Don't... I do that. I, I will, I will. Don't worry. You know, I would love to, hopefully one day I will, I will go to uh, Amsterdam, find you, bring us a Pisco Sour. <laughs> and then we listen to your music, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, I can I can buy pisco sour here here in the United States. So. Yeah, it's a, it's that, that, that's good, Claudio. We'll do that. Yeah, well, that's all I have. I know you 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 don't have that much time, Eric. And I wanted to thank you for your time, man. I love your music. Thank you very much for the two boxes, man. And uh, we'll do a show on the radio. We'll play your music. I will send you a link of this interview so you can use it for whatever you want. And then I will okay. upload the recording to. You the radio as well. So thanks again for your music, man. You've been very good to me, very kind. And I hope to, hope to meet you one day, man. We get yeah. we bring some pisco sour. Will you stay on the line for a minute when we sure. when you want to cut it off? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then let me stop the recording and then I will hold on. Yeah. Let me okay. Oh let me stop the recording here. So we will